Hello and welcome to episode one, pilot episode, whatever you want to call it, of BYOB, which is Bring Your Own Blockbuster Podcast. Um, my name's Ben Haynes and I'm joined by uh, a, a behemoth of the podcast scene, <laughs> <laughs> Jack Cussie. How are you, mate? I'm very good. I'm very good. Thank you, mate. I, I feel like you might be bigging me up a bit too much for this Not one, but I'll take it. My ego, you know, you know, my ego it loves it. <laughs> massaging. So sufficiently stroked. Yeah. <laughs> Do you want to tell us what we're talking about today? Which film you went for? Well, I thought I thought a, a nice sort of a wholesome one to start on because it's something we, you know, we've spoken about a lot just as friends, just in passing to appreciators of cinema. This is, came out at the time, you know, around when we were both growing up. Nice nostalgic vibes. I chose Mrs. Doubtfire. Mate, what a shout. What a shout. No. It's just so, like, it just, no, honest, it's one of those films, I'm sure it's the same for you, it's so synonymous with my childhood. Yeah, so much time. of it that I just can't just immediately start sort of placing and and like even just little things like seeing what they're wearing and the music you know at the, at the very beginning of the film they've got jump around by house of pain yeah and they're on the table doing the dance it's just it, absolutely incredible like you say about the kind of takes you back to place to me it's you know getting the vhs from blockbuster and sitting there with your mum and your dad and your sort of siblings on the sofas tape on you've got your like homemade popcorn and that's it. Do you know what I mean? Because yeah. I don't think I saw this one in the cinema. I think I was this, maybe like a little bit too young or whatever. But I think this was definitely a, a home rental job. Eh? Yeah. And we should say for, for the record, producer Purdy was actually minus six when this came out. And the idea for him of going down to a blockbuster and looking for a VHS to get out is probably so foreign. He's probably wondering what a VHS is, mate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> No, I, I, I've I had exactly the same thing as a kid, just going down and, and, and you, the blockbuster on the, the high street and you'd be sifting through films and looking through the blurbs. You Because know, you know, on the, they always had like, they only had one version of the film at the front and you had to read the blurb on the back to see if it sounded like interesting to you. And they'd always have like a, a tape of like trailers of lots of the movies that were out to oh, rent at that point yeah. on TVs up in up and around the store. Do you know what I mean? Like there was Love such it. an experience, you know, because there is something to to be said about all this, man. Like, it, don't get me wrong, it's 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 great in many ways to have as many movies as you like at the sort of touch of a button on Netflix, Prime, any of the other kind of streaming services that I don't want to miss out in case they want to sponsor us at any point in the future. <laughs> 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 but, but you know, like you, you know how things like now, like like film like um cameras like p young people taking photos they want to take them on cameras now they're sort of sick of taking everything on their phone or on digital cameras seeing the image instantly and being like oh no take that again i've got a double chin and all this sort of thing the whole sort of experience of getting a film developed and getting the photos back from the party a couple of weeks ago or something like that like there's something in that and like you know now at the moment like vinyl is like growing vinyls having like its biggest kind of like years of sales since like the really? 80s or something yeah it's mad like it's it's making like i think it's hundreds of millions of, oh of pounds dollars worldwide again now it's like such a growing industry and i think people like want to feel kind of connected more in touch and this is this is why you know when there's often that kind of panic about like the cinema it might die if if streaming services keep putting movies on the cinema, I, I i don't agree because i feel like it's like we were sort of moaning about it in 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 one part at the top or at least i was about people whispering and all this type of thing there's still something there there's like a, there's a there's a there's a there's an experience to that right that you yeah. don't get from just flicking through something on your on your phone and putting it on and and i guess that's something like this mrs doubtfire it does the whole experience of blockbuster and all this sort of nostalgia that we're talking about now it's all wrapped up in that do you know what i mean it's wrapped up yeah. in like childhood fondness and that type of thing yeah, and it's, it's basically the, the kind of re-emergence or, or kind of the reinserting of anticipation. Do you know what I mean? It's that, that idea that you, you, you can't, everything is so instantaneous. The idea of going to, get a, going to get a film actually processed or having to wait for something, do you know what I mean? And having to hope that it might be good as opposed to just being like, well, if it's not good within 
five minutes i'll chuck it out and get the next thing exactly that if if you rent a movie and it's crap you well you watch it to the end anyway you know yeah yeah yeah. and it's kind of and i don't know i guess one might say there's a sort of waste of time to that but then i think it also makes the really great movies feel a lot more special in a way 100 percent, 100 percent. and this is one of the like this is one of them for me as well um one of the things that we're going to be doing is basically spoilers encouraged which is a 60 second synopsis but since you've chosen the film shall i try and blast through the synopsis in 60 seconds yeah i i, I like the sound of that mate i like the sound because if we're going to do this like going forwards like as a book club type thing yeah it's quite nice to know that the the film that you've suggested has actually been watched by the other person isn't it you know? yeah oh and i took so <laughs> much like honestly i took so much joy in watching this back yeah i took so it was it was there were so many things as well. Do you know what? We're going to get into all of that. I'll try and do it. So I'll, try, I'll put 60 seconds on the truck, I'll, clock. I'll try and do it justice. So Robin Williams' character, Daniel, is basically a jobbing actor slash voiceover art- artist who can't hold down a job. Film starts with him kind of getting biffed from a film um, or biffed from a voiceover job because he basically wants to have a moral compass and a character on the screen is starting to smoke and he doesn't like it um goes home and then decides to have a mad like absolutely bizarre birthday party for his son uh, where farmyard animals are involved it's all a bit wild his missus comes home and she's like look i've had enough of this you are a nonsense and then the entire film basically follows the process of the couple split with a twist that Robin Williams basically decides to become a crossdresser and go to become nanny for his children. Um, yeah, do you know what? I ca- this is impossible. There is so much to this film, like to even sort of get into to try and spoil it in 60 seconds. It's just like, it just is, it is so wild and so bizarre. Yeah, at the same time, the thread of it, when I watched it back, just made so much sense. It is, it's surprisingly multi-layered for a film that was kind of billed as just like a Robbie Williams kooky comedy, right? Yeah, it, it, like uh, the thing is, it, obviously Robin Williams is, is, a, is a, he's an absolute like, yeah, he's just an icon. And, and I, there's very few Robin Williams films that I would not sit through still. But at the time... I'm I'm sure it would have just been deemed as just another like oh it's another light comedy, with a with a guy pretending to be a woman as part of it. It's real peak of his powers though this one wasn't it? You know? Yeah, and and did so many little bits in it that just kind of transport you straight away like instantly just kind of just little moments little bit. we've sent each other about fifteen clips today of little things that just <laughs> little things that just caught our eye. Um, what did you so i've uh, kind of i'll put my cards on the table this for me i'm not saying this is a perfect film because i've been told off by purdy for saying that it's perfect but for me if i was going to put this on the popcornometer and be like how many popcorns out of five i'd give this five straight away and i totally am aware that i'm biased and i'm totally aware of the fact that it's because it scratches an itch for me from my childhood but what is it for you oh it's definitely it's a five it's 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 the the writing the the kind of the hero arc all of it is is it's lovely it's it's something that you know there's plenty in there that can be appreciated by by all the family um but like we say it is it is multi-layered it is heartfelt it, and it's it's earnest in many ways i think there's a there's a there's a decent message there about like how love can transcend you know about familial love and about how important that is to people and the lengths that people will go to 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 kind of preserve and protect that even if it means pushing them into doing questionable things i guess there's like one like really crystallizing moment where um robin williams character says to himself he's like what are you doing this is beyond obsession yeah and and like that it's kind of dark as well isn't it yeah it's kind of dark dark that's like one of the only moments of that real kind of clarity. Self-aware. Yeah, exactly. It's it, it, totally it, it, I, I never really picked up on that. It's, f- it's so funny you know, it said that. Because I, I watched this, I think I watched this movie, but you know, I watched this um, just today, actually. 
but I haven't watched it probably for five or six years. Yeah. Um, and then before then, probably five or six years before that and so on. But this time, that bit really stuck out. And I don't know if it's just because I'm getting a bit older and I don't know, you're more kind of acutely aware of certain things. But yeah, it was, it was he sort of realised like, this is quite sinister actually. And I do, I do think there is, I don't think they 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 shy away from that i think that maybe they make light of it i mean they definitely make light of it but i think they're aware that it's kind of he's having a moment right daniel yeah. he's kind of, like you say he's jobbing he's down on his luck he says because there's another moment as well you know and this is what it's tied to as well that, I, that really stood out for me this time there's a bit when he basically sort of says to the boss unknowingly what kind of an idiot is still yeah. scheduling oh. stuff like this for children and they have that little discussion and then just before he walks off when the boss comes and he's having this good chat with the with the big boss and then his kind of direct boss at that time comes and says like what the hell are you doing in here get back to work do your job you know leave him alone pack those need shipping those things and he just sort of says to the to the boss do you ever sometimes like just want to have a snapshot of your life and just think this is not my life. Yeah. You know, and oh, I'm kind of like, whoa. But, but also you know? the fact that he was addressing that to like the big boss as well. Yeah. It's so bleak. Like it was so like, and it's really weird as well. It's so true what you say. There's so many little things that jumped out at me that was like, there's no way as a kid that I would have seen that. No. That line would have just gone over my head, like completely over my head. And that's the thing. There was so much of this that just reminded me of like watching The Simpsons. Yeah, you know what I mean, I, know, things, I do know what you mean. Yeah. When you were a kid and you watch Simpsons, you laugh at maybe something that Bart would say, and then now you find Homer yourself... dropping a bowling ball on his foot or something. Exactly, and now you find yourself seeing Homer say things, and you like just feel completely aligned with <laughs> with the things that he's saying. You're like, yeah. this is mad. And like I said it to you earlier on, but like it does make you feel like God, I'm actually getting old because I'm starting to see the things. Like there's that conversation that he has. Um, so it's like, I don't know, maybe midway through the film where he's having a cup of tea as Mrs. Doubtfire with his ex-wife and they start getting into the stuff that that she liked and didn't like about him. And like he's just let a couple of little times where he just lets the veil slip just a little bit and his voice kind of changes as he's asking her questions because he sort of forgets to ask as Mrs. Doubtfire. And like that whole bit of dialogue, I don't fit again. Like as a kid, I just would never have seen what that was doing to him. The fact that it was like it's like that weird thing that you do sometimes, where you're like, I, I, I shouldn't want to know, but I want to know. Can you just get on and tell me this stuff so that I can get on with feeling dreadful about myself? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's it's funny, isn't it? Because the interesting thing about a movie like this and having kind of grown up with it, like the the entry point to this film being as a child you've obviously watched this thinking you know what if that was my mum and dad what, what if that kind of thing happened what if Robin Williams was my dad but now like you say the older and older you get you're kind of thinking like god what if my partner was saying those things about me if I found out that for years she was crying herself to sleep and was so desperately unhappy I thought I was just like this funny happy-go-lucky guy and actually my actions were really making her upset to the point where you're kind of like because she goes from being billed as like the baddie really the yeah miranda is it miranda i think the yeah, yeah, yeah 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 she's kind of billed as the baddie and when i was watching it at f like at first i was watching this i was thinking like god this i know we will talk about this type of stuff a bit a bit later on but this part maybe this hasn't aged very well the whole kind of like robin williams is the happy-go-lucky dad and she's like the battle axe and she's this kind of nasty woman i think god that feels a bit 90s you know it feels like that's kind yeah. of not great but then you sort of see they start to scratch into it and you start to realize that like in a way and i think he becomes conscious of it that his behavior was pretty toxic as well you know Mate. and i don't think they hide from that this is one of the questions I was going to ask you. I was like, you know that peep show meme? I'm like, is he the baddie? Yeah, you know, and I, I, I think I think what the film does quite well is it just it's really at the end it's showing you that no one's really the baddie. That people just people change, people grow, 
and they can still be you know it's like the 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 closing monologue in the film which sends it still sends a shiver down my spine really when robin williams is reading that letter out and you know the the final shot of the of the film obviously now everything that we you know everything that's happened with robin williams since when he just says bye bye and it fades to black you're just kind of like it, it's choking me up even like thinking about it a bit now but you know the whole sort of point around that it really felt like they were trying to show you that like love changes it can grow and it can it can recede in places but it it doesn't mean it has to mean nothing you know yeah that it, it yeah. can take different forms it can take different shapes and where there is love people can find bridges and people can find ways to make things work and they can transcend whatever moment they're in at a certain point in time you know yeah, and that it's... sounds a bit corny but no, it's no, kind no. of it's a corny kind of film in a way but i think it's done really well you know it doesn't feel nauseating at the end when he's no, like when no. he's reading that letter out you don't, you don't find yourself kind of sitting there being like a bucket of yuck but there's another there's another really interesting thing in that so i had exactly the same experience watching it back that i was like oh god maybe he's actually a bit of a tosser and mm. as a as a kid when i was watching it i was like who wouldn't want a birthday party like yeah. that with farmyard animals everywhere and dancing on the tables and like just it all kicking off and the police outside you'd be like that's the dream birthday party but it challenged me as well in a little way i was speaking to someone else about the film saying that we were about to do the pod about it and she was like she said the person i was speaking to said god and and, and the way as a kid that you thought Pierce Brosnan was this nasty piece of work and actually he's this dude who's like coming in and he's like a really nice guy and he wants to take them to nice places and 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 sort of actually seems to care about the kids in a nice way as well with one exception where there's that galling line where he calls Robin Williams character a loser he says it in that guy's a loser you know <laughs> he does he says it in such, such a horrible way and then that that's where you get the the, the run by fruiting where he just absolutely what a line. pelts him unbelievable like there's a lot and the other thing is a line directly before it as well maybe at 30 seconds before <laughs> where he says touch me again i'll drain you <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, you know what I I I still think Pierce Brosnan's a bit smarmy when I watch it I kind of it's, you know he kind he's, he's perfect, out for him. He? he knows what he's yeah he really is as well look Natty like, that's called labour suction because yeah. <laughs> he's because he's as well he's handsome but he's not too handsome you know yeah, he's, he's per, like, like and like just, professional yeah, he's, he's as well successful it. in his job but not like a, he's not like an actor or an athlete it's like just he's just he's basically Robin Williams but better. And I think there are there are sort of nice moments as well when you're seeing that, you know, we're talking about how like, because I do think one of the big themes in this film, obviously, I mean, it's quite physical with with him turning into Mrs. Doubtfire, but it is about like transformation. It's about people changing um, and it's about like people's lives changing. And you even see like that in the character of Piers Brosnan, you know, when he's at the bar with that other sort of old ball bag who's like <laughs> you settling down kind of thing. And he's like, yeah, well, you know, man, like I'm I'm nearly 40 and you know those kids are great i love them and you, we obviously understand that they've dated previously or something like that the two of them and it's not worked out for whatever reason but they feel like they're in a better place now to to, to try that again and it's yeah i mean it, it is funny isn't it but to the to the point of like is 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 daniel the baddie you you, you know his actions are he he calls the judge's sentence at the end despicable, but you're kind of like he's kind of from the outside, mate. You know, a lot of what he's saying is kind of on point. You've you you know you've been really genuinely batshit. Yeah, duplicitous, and it's it's you know it, it would be worrying behaviour in in real life, and you know it's it is a light film, right? And it's definitely it's a definitely a product of its time. It's very nineties, so. They probably don't, you know, feel they didn't feel the need to fully go into. You know, they didn't have the the, the 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 monologue scene where Daniel's looking in the mirror and wondering <laughs> what the hell he's doing and where his life has has gone to. But I think that's the. I think one of the real sort of joys about this film is like how kind of just how like tenderly it's written and how brilliantly it is written that 
when you do even get these little moments, like even to this, you know, like I say, 30 years on now, 30 years old, this film now, and I've, you know, I've probably watched it 10 plus times down the years, that I'm still seeing other little bits that just give away so much about like the character and what their intentions are and what they're thinking that, you know, maybe not everything needs to be laid out in front of you. It's quite nice to discover these extra little dimensions to people as you go along, you know? Yeah, I, I just loved the fact that it was because you're getting that sort of three dimensional stuff that you probably weren't getting before when you were younger. Yeah. That it's then, a, it's then actually like, I don't know, I just quite like the challenge of it. I like stuff that challenges you in that way that makes you look back at it and think like, oh God, have I have I got to sort of rewire how I watched this film? You know, like I, 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 I quite enjoyed the fact that I was suddenly sat there and, and, and in that weird conflict of being like, oh God, maybe it's a bit of a knob. Maybe if this was, maybe if this was delivered through the lens of his, uh, of Miranda's character, you'd have just been like, that guy's a grade A bell, just get rid of the guy. Like you would probably have that Pierce Brosnan reaction of the guy's a loser. Because I mean, he is genuinely going and, and getting a women's f woman's face made up so that he can schneid in to see his kids every day. By the way, that was un that scene is unbelievable. Uncle Frank and Aunt Jack. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> what a touch! That was just phenomenal. Like as a, there were, this was the other thing. There were so many of these setups and so many of these set plays that are just three to four minute bits of the film that just stand alone as like amazing scenes. Do you know what I mean? It's yeah. It's 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 a film that just gives me a lot of fond memories and. It's a happy place, you know. Um, that is such a good way of putting it. It's like an old pair of jeans, isn't it? Yeah, you know. What's uh, who? Who for you, mate? If I was to ask you, because I mean, there's only one answer for me, really. But who's the who's the MVP in this for you? Who's the standout star? Oh, I mean, it sounds it, silly to ask, doesn't it? Really, but I tell you what, I will. What I will give it, like, if 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 Robin Williams is obviously the MVP, do you know who I would give the kind of assist to? It's, um, I don't know her name, which is dreadful, but the character that plays Natalie or Natty or Rooney Natty. Mar Mara Wilson. Mara Wilson, that's it. Yeah, and she's yeah. obviously Matilda, Matilda and she was in one other amazing film, wasn't she? God, I'm going to have to Google this. That's so embarrassing. She's an old soul, isn't she? You know, yeah, like even when she was a little kid, she was an old soul. The we're hith goddamn kids too. It's just like, it, it, the, 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 she gets so many amazing little lines that you sort of even even then because i remember like oh shoot a miracle on 34th street yes that was the other one song. god how did i forget that but she's I mean, completely out of acting now she said she hated it you know and yeah that's she it. kind of understandable she's like but this, away from it you, you know with her there's something i've, I've always kind of felt and I, I don't get me wrong i think there's some brilliant exceptional kind of british actors obviously i don't really get into these culture wars about oh britain's got better actors or america does and this and that, even if the point I'm about to make does stoke them. <laughs> there is something, I don't know if it's to do with the culture, it's growing up knowing that Hollywood's on your doorstep, it's pushy parents or whatever. There's more avenues for film there. They're pushed more towards film and TV in America than stage like they are here. But I do think there is just the, the great child actors, like the really good child actors, are generally always American. There's something about like American, you know, you think about the Macaulay Culkins, you think about like, you know, like we're saying now, Mara Wilson, um, and there's plenty that are on the tip of my head that are just escaping me now Does, that I've just made this point. Does Leonardo DiCaprio count? Yeah, that? sure. What, he was in what, Basketball Diaries or yeah. was it Gilbert Grape when he was 13, 14, you know? Yeah. So that's but, just a side note. But, but have, have you ever been to, have you ever been to LA? I have, mate, yeah. So did you find when you were there that the whole it feels like the whole place is geared towards people like having a hustle like everyone's geared towards like they do their job and then it's like no but I'm actually I'm actually in Hollywood I'm a writer or I'm yeah. a actor or actress or or whatever and it's kind, that's of, kind like, of the whole point of it isn't it It's like, not frowned upon though is it it's not like it's not it's kind of weird I feel like in the UK if if you said, oh no, I'm I'm also like I I do some like I I do this in the day and then by night I want to I want to be an actor like people would be like, yeah mate sure. But that's uh, yeah I mean that's it's part of our culture isn't it we just we don't like the idea of people kind of 
lifting themselves above their station. Yeah, it's always been the kind box. of the, the British way, you know. It's and we we reward the truly exceptional people, but we don't like the idea of anybody who is not immediately successful trying to do something more. You know, this is probably going a, bit, this is going a bit deep, isn't it? You know, <laughs> <laughs> talk about Mrs. Doubtfire here. Yeah. You know? What well, yeah. about the bit where he goes for a piss and his son sees him? Yeah. Um, <laughs> the, do you know what? I, like, I'll, I will come back then because like, it, I, it feels wrong not to do a bit of a deep dive on Robin Williams yeah. because yeah. this is just unbelievable. There, there are points in, in this where he, where I, and I mean, you sent me one of the moments earlier on where it is laugh out loud funny, like uncontrollable laugh out loud funny, just by something that he just, it'll be a look or, or a noise or an impression. And you just find yourself just in fits. And then equally, you find yourself five minutes later nearly crying. Yeah. Just unbelievable. He's, he's, it's, it's, and I mean, I'm, I, I, I could pretty much watch anything that, like, I think about Goodwill Hunting or go to the furthest opposite end of the spectrum and like his silliest films what would that be like flubber yeah or N night at the museum or well you've Aladdin, even got some like or... pa patch adams that does both patch you adams. know like both did you ever see of... the film jack i did yeah 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 like i mean even that like there's so many of these films that are just like but i think this i think if i was gonna is this do you reckon this is up there with his best yeah, I, th I think I think this is real peak of his power stuff. Because I think the thing that he doesn't get with um, Goodwill Hunting is he doesn't get to do as much of the kind of comedy stuff. It's like an ama like it's amazingly deep, and I I love that film so much. But I don't think it like this. The range of it is just ridiculous. He's yeah, he's brilliant. And like you say, in terms of like you know you're laughing and one the next moment crying. I kind of I feel that just like not from what the film was like I do I find I find it like a weirdly emotional thing watching Robin Williams films now knowing yeah. you know his his ultimate fate and you know it's it seems like such a such a sad end for somebody who brought the world so much joy you know just such a a, a figure of our childhoods you know people our age anyway um and I, I would imagine, like, you know, a lot of our parents loved him. You know, it's, I think it's, it's the funny thing is, you know, and I, I, I actually stopped it because I didn't I didn't want it to pollute my old like memory of him. But if you even look at some of his old stand up, it's, it's really quite like explicit. It's really yeah. like yeah, it's really yeah. vulgar. Um, yeah. there's, he does a whole bit about like cunnilingus and how like because he's so hirsute, you know, and it, whatever it's. I sort of stopped it because I was like, I don't, I like, I don't, no, don't want to see you. Robin Williams no, talking this way, this. you know. But yeah. obviously, you no. Know, I, I think my parents, like, you know, whatever, Mork and Mindy and stuff like that, he was in, and I don't know. He's just, he's, he's, he's such a, he's such a loss, and it's so. I think it's so like keenly felt by so many people, you know. Sort of weirdly visceral with him. I don't know, but it's sort of weird. You sort of felt like you knew him. Do you know what I yeah, mean? It's such a yeah. strange thing to say, but you almost, even when you just see him on like chat shows and stuff, that energy, I think it's the, the energy thing, right? Is that he just, everywhere was just bursting with energy. You sort of so infectious. And when you see a film like this, there is this horrible realization that you're what, you're, this is a time capsule and that that time has got a lifespan with an end point. And it, 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 I always think when you watch, if you watch back old series and you go back to series from that you used to watch when you were a kid, you know when they kill off a main character? Yeah. And it's like you can't ever take that back. You know, that that then exists and will always affect the way in which you watch that series back because you know what's going to happen to that character. You know that whatever happens throughout the thread of their kind of narrative in the, in the show, they're going to die at some point. And I think that's one of the reasons why when you watch this, it kind of really challenges you because you're like, oh God, this was, this was kind of, I mean, so this, this film's 30 years old this year. How long ago did he die? I, I, I th off the top of my head, I'd say six or seven years ago now. So it says he passed away 
yeah, 2014. So, that how mad is that? This th he, basically he he only twenty years after twenty years after the film, right? Yeah. He was. Like, it's just so sort of. I mean, just looking at looking through his, you know, when that comes up with your the the movies that he's sort of most known for, and you look through it. I forgot about Hook. Yeah. Wow. And, like, yeah. Hook. Happy Feet. Um, yeah, Dave even Poets even one of his like lesser ones, like, do you ever see One Hour Photo? Well, it was a horrible movie, say, but like you know, it unbelievable. Was, yeah, incredible. You know? Like, and just the, the, yeah, to think that he sort of could do that. I think half half of his films as well. Clearly, he just wanted to kind of like challenge himself. He wanted to give himself a a, a challenge to go out and actually try and be something different. So he wasn't just playing the same sort of character. Just amazing, absolutely amazing. Oh man, it's, a it's, it, it like and it, it yeah, it is quite sort of weird that you find it. I think all the more upsetting in the sad moments in the film because you know what comes for for him as an aside. Um, okay, ultimate question: the aging process, fine wine or war crime? Well, it's a very interesting one, this mate. I think. Um, given kind of the world now um, and the conversations that we are having, um, especially around kind of like, you know, the trans community, LGBTQ plus community. Um, I was really interested because to kind of understand more from a different perspective, you know, obviously I'm a straight bloke. Um, so I can't, I can't sort of, jump into this and say oh you know it's fine it was just it was a nice i mean obviously from my perspective i look at it and i think you know it's it's it, it doesn't feel like a the 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 root message of the movie it doesn't feel transphobic or problematic it's you know the the guy is cross-dressing um but it's a ploy to kind of to win his family back and not i, I it didn't feel like too many of the jokes um were at the expense of yeah. say the kind of cross-dressing or trans community and i apologize if my terminology isn't completely on point um and so i did i did sort of i read through a a kind of a, a reddit thread um about this and it, it, it does seem to be you know as you imagine on the on the internet there is kind of a, a mixed opinion about this you, you see lots of kind of trans people talking about the kind of solace and the, the the joy they found in watching a film like that and many who say that they didn't like it that there are still some, and I, and what I will say is I'm not completely ignorant to the fact that even me watching it back this time, even through my kind of straight male eyes, there are a few jokes in there, and there are a few themes in there that have not aged particularly well. I think mm. um, there are certain moments in the film. Um, let me think about, for, for example, like the when when he's on the phone and he says oh you know i don't look after males because i used to be one and she's kind of ooh yuck and hangs the phone up and things you, you're kind of like mm, that's that's kind of a you can see it's a bit of a it's a it's a bit of an ugly joke now and it's it's not one that should be made it is laughing at the expense of somebody else um and i think there were there were, there were several kind of small moments like that where you know the jokes are just kind of you know uh, maybe a bit, you know. You sort of win. You find yourself wincing. Yeah, you? that, you that's the, go, that's the go, best way oh, to put it. No. Like, I, I, and it's not that you, it's not that you're wincing out of out of like some aggressive judgment of the time because you can. I can imagine this is what nineteen ninety, what nineteen ninety four. I guess ninety three, ninety four, um, and. L of its time it was probably seen as quite a forward thinking film like if you think in 1993 the idea of having a gay couple living together that is uh, uncle uh aunt jack and uncle frank or whatever that was probably quite forward thinking and yet there's other moments like you said where you just find yourself kind of just being like oh but i think that's again that classic thing of us in 2023 looking at it being like oh not for me do you know what i mean that i, I, I are not hugely comfortable with that but at the same time i mean it, one of the things for me that stood out on that was the bit where the son is like he's a she's he's she he she he thing and i remember as a kid finding that hysterical 
Yeah. And then now, when I was watching it, I was like, oh, it's a bit kind of off. And then the, the son doesn't want to, like, touch his dad. Well, it, it, it's funny that. So one of the one of the comments in particular I read, it was just, I'm sure they won't be listening to this, but it was from a Reddit user called Wild Insights. Um, and they, you know, trans person speaking about their own experience and everything. Um, and th- they're kind of the... the the end of their point was a, and I'll read you this verbatim, it's Mrs. Doubtfire isn't supposed to be a trans character, but the other characters' reactions are a pretty decent reflection of how society views trans people mm. as disgusting deceivers. Um, the movie makes my stomach turn, and I understand oh, no. why why trans people wouldn't be why other trans people aren't bothered but personally i hate it and they go on to talk about as well it's it's the um it's that scene in particular like you say it's the it's the peeing scene and the sun and the revulsion and all that kind of thing and you know when you read stuff like that you you know you 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 do take that on board and you think like you know i I can imagine for some people it's you know it's not it's not a happy place and if that's if that's because it it seems to be that the point isn't just so much about the movie that it evokes a feeling of what wider society and how how they feel or how you know how yeah how they feel that they are seen in in society and how society treats trans people so you know that that is upsetting to hear but uh, you know equally there are there are there are many many like people of you know different denominations who say you know that like I say that they found solace and it was even if it was clunky in places it was, you know, nice to see a movie where more of these themes were explored, even though it wasn't a movie about a trans woman. You know, it, no. it wasn't. It was It was ultimately, it was a heartfelt film about a dad who was just so desperate to spend time with his kids that he, you know, he went to these great lengths to hire his brother who designs prosthetics and become Mrs. Doubtfire. You know, it's Eugenian Doubtfire, you know. <laughs> I don't know what the hell the accent... That's one thing I will say about the movie that hasn't aged well is, what the hell is that English accent supposed to but be? The, she what, sounds the, Irish, you know. What was it... They said that it, one of the bits that she was... He said, he was good, your, your accent's a bit muddled. And she's like, so your hand. Oh yeah, <laughs> I love those little uh, those so little bites good. between between oh, Robin Williams and Pierce Brosnan. He's honestly, there's so many of those little little. There's that there's that scene as well when they're in the restaurant and he's like warning him off, trying to sleep, <laughs> trying to sleep with her. I, it's so, just amazing. I, I wanted to ask you this, right? Because I watched this. I, I, this time I watched this on Disney Plus, right? Um, yeah. I streamed it on there. Now there's that scene. When he's talking about, so he's bought Miranda that expensive that gift, right? Yeah. And he says, oh, what's that? Is that a going down payment? Is that a, you know, he, he starts to say yeah. all these kind of different little things. I, I swear I've never seen that scene in any other version before. And it I made me put, wonder if the one on Disney is like a director's cut or something. But I, yeah, I, it really stood out to me at the time. Because I was like, I don't remember that. But then again, do you think it's possible that we just, as kids, had no idea what he was talking about? Potentially, but like I say, I have watched it since, and that scene in particular, I don't remember. But you know, sometimes the you know the mind just it loses things, doesn't it? But that you know? was like on the nut. No- like some of that stuff was really on the nose, and the kids are sitting at the table. Yeah, as well. So he's doing it in front of his own children, which is quite bizarre. Of he says, "Are you going to get out a bit of the old rumple foreskin or something like <laughs> yeah, that?" He right. says as well, you know, like <laughs> bloody hell. But um, so, yeah, go on. Cause I remember. But no, just some of those lines. They're just absolutely mm-hmm. like incredibly sort of. That was about as, I think, I suppose the film is reaching a bit of a climax. There, isn't it? Like it's starting to, it's starting to get to that point as like the stakes are being up. So I guess he's kind of, maybe you're meant to be seeing him getting more and more kind of, and he's also getting absolutely hammered as well, which I, yeah. like, which I just, the bit where he falls off the chair is just magnificent. And then they have to fish his teeth out of the, out of the glass. Um, the, the one of the, sorry, go on, mate. I just wanted to, to ask you very quickly. Before. Yeah. Because I'm very conscious of the fact that I, I completely stole the kind of fine wine or war crime um, thing from you. You know, to me, it's, it's, it's a good wine, I think. Still, you know, I would say it's it, it's it's going towards fine wine, but there's there's maybe a little bit of corkage in there from there's some of the, some of the little risk, isn't there? Y- yeah. How uh, what what do you what do you feel about it, mate? So there was 
this uh, this video that I sent to you, which was of a a, a guy in drag at a Graham Norton filming, um, sort of saying that Mrs. Doubtfire was a sort of like a, a hero for him, and like I I my missus is a huge fan of RuPaul's Drag Race, um, and it was one of those weird things that made me realize sort of i felt ignorant for realizing it when i did which was when we were kind of like prepping for this that i'd never thought about it from that point of view that i'd never thought about the idea that someone might be watching that who absolutely loves drag and and the idea of getting sort of involved in drag and all of the the bits and pieces that come with that in terms of the makeup in terms of the prosthetics in terms of like the the outfits and it just never it never even struck me before that that might have actually been on some level an inspiration for someone and the one of the big things with drag is that comedy is huge within it like you, you you're not just a you're not just a character the idea is that you should be making people laugh but you should also be able to sing and he in the film is obviously like enormously talented as well they kind of don't dive into that too much but he does sing within the film and he does like really f- funny bits of improv and he does that whole skit with the dinosaurs as well yeah which i just sort of again i've completely forgotten about and so that was that was really eye-opening for me that was really interesting and that kind of meant that i was kind of like oh, okay there's another element to this equally there was enough moments like you said where i winced where i thought oh that made me think, okay, I need to probably check my how I've interpreted this film because we only ever see it through our lens, right? You see yeah, it, yeah. You see it through your lens, how you watch it and how it impacts you. And then I, I know it's similar for you, but I absolutely love when I go away from the cinema. I, I, I love the conversation after it. Whoever I've mm. gone with, I want to, I want to get stuck in. I want to, yeah. I want to tear it like tear the meat off the bone, sort of thing, and really get stuck in on what the film was saying and what it was trying to do and i think those little bits that make you wince it's okay to wince at a film and also be completely wrapped up and enveloped by the message around family and what love is and the idea of how love can evolve and develop like you're saying i think for me i'm in a really similar place i know that there are elements of this film that will be upsetting to people i also know there are so many moments in this film that just feel like a big hug that for me just on a personal level for me and i know it won't be the same for everyone else but for me it does something to me where it just it it makes me feel good i I watched it and i just like it really felt like being taken back to that period of in the 90s and the early noughties where i was just a kid and I think a lot of it is that blissful ignorance. Maybe there's something there in that as well as to why I enjoyed it so much. Because it reminds me of the simplicity of just watching Robin Williams do his thing and being able to laugh, you know, yeah. and just kind of the simplicity of that and not thinking too far beyond it. But yeah, for me, I'm, I'm in the same boat, mate. I think it's a, I think it's a good wine that I enjoyed drinking. It's like one of those wines that you have on holiday and then you come home you drink it and you remember where you were when you drank it yeah yeah it's because you touched on it earlier mate and i think what what just completely nails it for me is that it could be like it could so easily veer into being mawkish and cringy mm. but it, it doesn't it, it manages to evade that at every turn like i say there are slightly corny elements to the film on paper but it isn't it's just to me it's really it's really quite like tenderly executed yeah. and just genuinely heartfelt and i think i think to be honest i think the performances are strong across the board the kids are great and everything but the you know the beating heart of the film is robin williams and it, it's it's films like this that just really again it just emphasizes like like you're sort of saying what a talent he was and just what a huge loss he is you know, and it, it, I can only sort of say it so many times because he's just, you know, he's such a, he's such a hero of mine, you know, in many yeah. ways. Yeah, and I, like, I, I, there's like that bit where he describes um, 
as he's playing the character Mrs. Doubtfire and he describes his partner and he says, I prefer him short, furry and funny. <laughs> and that really did something to you. I was like, I love yeah. that. I absolutely yeah. love yeah, that. Yeah. And um, yeah. there was a there was another thing that I just, oh God. Yeah, th- for example, you, the point you just made, wh- it, it, he slams his head into a cake and claims that it's a face mask. <laughs> <laughs> and equally, there's the moment where he, he catches, he, he, he's getting, he's running in and out of the bathroom to pretend to be both characters at once so he can have the meeting with his boss and also be with the family and, and stop his wife from getting off with Pierce Brosnan. And he leaves the mask on and catches a view of himself in the mirror. And you sent me the video of, of, of that moment. Oh, it, and it kills me every time. <laughs> Your laugh, it's like guttural, uncontrollable laughter. Can we can we clip that on? Can we we can Mate, we're allowed we to use to. fair use, can't you? You can get, put little bits 100%. in there. It's yeah, we'll clip them. We'll send that just, to to producer Purdy. Yeah, absolutely, and it just, it just hearing you laugh, there is such a joy in the idea of someone laughing in exactly the same way that you laugh at the same thing. Because it's so unspoken, you know, it's just, and he doesn't, there's no line of dialogue. He just catches this glimpse of himself in the mirror and uh, scre- <laughs> just screams. It's just <laughs> perfect. It, it, every, honestly, every single time, ever since I was a kid, it's just, I found it <laughs> hilarious, you know? It's, it's the way like he does it. No, the, the, and that's just it for, for Ron Williams. It's like, there's the delivery of like the certain little lines, you know, like <laughs> after he's just performed the Heimlich maneuver on Pierce Brosnan. The face is down, and he just says, he turns to Brandon and just says, Happy birthday. You know, just uh, the delivery is so perfect. But then, even with like the the physical comedy, the physical theatre of it, he just he just nails it all. And the, I tell you what, I just I love about this because you, you've heard about stuff like, you know, from when they were recording Aladdin or when, when they were workshopping Aladdin, people were just like, Well, we had the script, and then Robin <laughs> got his hands on it, and it became a very different thing in many places. You can't help but think, right? He probably had the script. And like you say, you know, like the moments, either that moment in the restaurant or the moment with the cake and stuff, where they're like, well, we've got this bit and he, Daniel, he's got the, the visitor from the, the courts who's come to watch and... She's brilliant, by the way. He, uh, yeah, she is. And she's going to bump into... She's, very sadly, she actually passed away in 2001. Um, just on that note, yeah. But he, uh, you know, that he's got this... What can we do here? And you can imagine, just like there's a part of me that just feels that like a lot of it was just Robin Williams, like just leave it with me. Give me, give me a couple of days to just have a think about this. Yeah. And you can imagine him like bounding onto set with notes and all this type of stuff. Like I can do this, I can do that, I can do the voice like this. And do you know that's just the sort of energy he he exudes. And do, shall I tell you the bit where that jumps out at me? You know the bit where he goes. I do voices. And she's like, you do voices? I do yes. voices. Yes. And you're like, there is no way anyone scripted any of that. And he just he just sort of just went with whatever. Which is just, I mean, all of it is just complete perfection. It's so good. It's so, uh, so good. And Hanny was her name as well. Um, the, the court visitor with the ice cake, ice oh, mate, face the, cake. The bit where she just like, she, like Mrs. Doubtful walks off and she dabs a bit of the stuff and puts it on her face. She dabs just a little bit because he says, oh, it's my it's my face mask made of egg whites and sugar and all of this. And she looks completely appalled and then he leaves the room and then she starts applying it to her face. It's just so, so well done. Um, mate, I think that was that you couldn't really have picked a better film for us to start on. There was it's, so much in that. It's, so it's a bit special. of everything, isn't there, mate? bit of everything. Do you want to know what I'm going to go for for next week? Go on. And... I'd been thick. There's so much pressure on this because you picked such a good one to start with, and it's a slight gear change. But, and you'll be able to tell from this that I listened to your other podcast today. <laughs> I am going to suggest Whiplash. Oh, perfect! Love it, love it, mate. Available to watch on Netflix at the moment in the UK, I think. Let me just check that so that I don't give you incredibly incorrect information. But there's so much to get into on this one as well that I know you, you and I will have an absolute field day with it. Yeah, so it's on Netflix at the moment and can be oh. watched if, you, if you've got Netflix f- free of charge. Just to, just to jump in at this point, mate, before we do go, 
Mrs. Doubtfire, I'm going to ask you, Rotten Tomatoes, critic score and audience score. What, oh, what are you it. guessing Mrs. Doubtfire got? So I'm trying, to, I'm trying to work out whether it's, because it's now 30 years old, whether it's been, whether it's been manipulated up and down. I would say 80% Rotten Tomatoes. So is that for your critic score? Yeah. Critic score on Rotten Tomatoes, 70%. Oh, wow. Mm. What is it on? So let me do, let me go through the rounds. So critic score on Rotten Tomatoes, IMDb, okay, about so seven and a half. You're going to say seven and a half on IMDb. IMDb has Mrs. Doubtfire as 7.1. Wowzers. IMDb is like Le Keep, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like br- Nothing's getting brutal. past them. <laughs> Absolutely brutal. You make a perfect film and you get an eight. Um, what about Metacritic? Fifty-three <laughs> percent. Oh, how brutal. brutal! And then okay, do, and we should probably add in the BYOB rating. What are we going to give it? Five popcorns out of five, mate done deal absolutely magnificent and um, we need to make sure that we've got some social channels for people to subscribe to us on and follow us on and all of that hullabaloo we can we can rec- we can record a little bit once we've done that right love it yeah this let's is do magnificent that. what love a touch it, rate love and it. review us please